uh, to the organizers. Thank you, Sarah. And congratulations again to PASIG no, for the progress that it has been uh, making towards sustainable mobility and electric mobility. And as, as you have all seen, uh, LGUs are best placed and are able to have uh, a, a data-driven policy-making process. And we've seen how uh, such evidence or data can be used for, for policy reforms. So my presentation is actually going to be very brief. And if you have been joining us in the sessions, uh, you would observe that this somehow uh, tries to summarize or contextualize uh, those uh, into the Philippine setting. So we're going to look at LG role uh, in e-mobility transition. So it's important at uh, uh, to understand first no, that within and beyond the e-mobility and energy domains, there are various stakeholders. So these are normally coming from the government. Um, here, the government-owned and controlled corporation. Uh, we have EV users uh, and operators. We also have regulators and policymakers uh, who are uh, addressing uh, societal, uh, economic, and environmental aspects. And so we also need to identify during this process uh, of identifying the, the actors, you know, the drivers that are motivating the different stakeholders. So uh, we've seen uh, as many of our participants are coming from the government. We have some some from private sector. We also had uh, participation of uh, different CSOs now, uh, in the last few training days. Um, we will not dive much into uh, the different drivers reflecting the, the roles uh, and responsibilities, but we'll focus first on, on LG. Yeah? So to provide uh, a, a complete solution to the consumers, we need to look, uh, we need to somehow uh, facilitate this engagement, stakeholder engagement process. Now, so um, as you can see uh, in the screen, we also have the buildings and homes, those who are involved in property development, real estate. Uh, we also are going to be uh, working with uh, energy importers uh, who are involved, I mean, in regulating the energy uh, importation, uh, the federal prices, energy security. So all of these have, uh, all of these are our drivers, you know, some examples. Uh, also touching on the hazardous waste. So in the Philippines, we have a DNR on that. Um, and the other drivers include um, GHG emissions um, and the National Climate Goals or NDCs. Uh, at the local level, we are looking at urban air pollution, uh, improvement of local air quality and improvement of public health. So those are just some uh, actors, right? So, but first an intro for those who are not familiar with the Philippine settings. I believe we have a couple uh, of participants who are joining us from, uh, uh, from outside of the Philippines. So here uh, we have governments below the national government level, which as you would see, vary a bit from one another. So, but one message that we want to point out here after, after you've heard uh, Dana talk about the EI and, and Sarah, uh, is that LGUs are best placed to determine measures from the ground up because of the presence of the barangay, so the, the smallest unit of govern, government system uh, in the Philippines. Um, so very briefly, um, the national government uh, need to provide, uh, generally the national government agencies need to provide the enabling conditions and an environment uh, for electric mobility. And they have to be able to provide a, a level playing field for a healthy competition. So here's one uh, from one image, no? Uh, uh, from a study developed from 2019. So this is a deep, uh, Department of uh, Trade and Industry Sanction study. And uh, that's also co-implemented uh, by five universities. So one of that uh, includes uh, uh, De La Salle University. So you'd hear from one of the key authors shortly. So the, the study recommends that an EV program for us sh should be anchored on addressing the core challenges uh, so that the program, the EV program would realize the potential benefits. So that includes what are the core challenges? So uh, that includes demand generation, um, EV cost reduction, the industry development, and the charging uh, infrastructure development. So, so let's go through a bit uh, uh, quickly on uh, uh, the four pillars now. So uh, first, the demand generation. So some of these include 
uh, in a corporate EV fleet program. So the goal kasi for the demand generation is you want to create the demand uh, of uh, in industries operating the vehicle fleets. So um, considering the limitations in funding to subsidize you know, the vehicle adoption and purchase, so there has to be a combination of reg regulatory uh, and incentive approach. Um, and, and another uh, example for the demand generation uh, that the set studies also suggesting is yung, um, introducing the minimum EV share in public transport modes. So in other countries, they're also do doing this. Um, in the Philippines, of course, we have to consider which are under the national government, which are under the, the local government. So, But they're one opportunity uh, that could be tapped. Uh, other things of, uh, related to demand generation is um, you know how governments would have their own fleets also. And the studies showed that there are about uh, 12,000 vehicles that are being purchased by the government agencies annually. So, so if there is a, uh, an opportunity here to uh, dictate that at least 10% of government uh, vehicles, uh, vehicle procurement, uh, be allotted to EVs at, uh, for a, a duration of time, that could be uh, one of the options. Uh, others, for example, um, the EV cost reduction, that would be like the importation tariff, the uh, excise taxes, um, and other selective, selected uh, tax exemption. So um, in other cases, that's also related to the eco, that could also be linked to the eco PUV um, program of the, the Department of Trade and Industry. So they have a comprehensive automotive resurgence strategy or the CARS program. So some of you might be familiar with that already. So um, if that would be linked to the EV cost reduction, um, so that's also one of the recommendations. Uh, next, on the charging infrastructure development, um, that includes the EV charging point master plan, uh, charging infrastructure development incentive program, um, uh, formulation of charging power rates, uh, and special charging, po yeah, uh, charging power rates. So these are some of the recommendations that this study um, has provided. So, uh, but where does the local government uh, come in? So here we have uh, preliminary uh, notes on the, the agencies who are involved in these slides. So, so this is a preliminary mapping of instruments. No? So of course, this is subject to the review of different go local government agencies, uh, especially given the varying type of governance system that uh, they might have. Uh, but this is a, a diagram or an overview of various instruments that you have already heard in the last few sessions. So these are also opportunities in a way for transitioning passenger and goods movement uh, towards electrification. So um, I'll, I don't know if you're able to see the arrow that I have on the screen, but maybe I'll, I'll walk you through this. So the different instruments that are that could be taken are, this could be a framework that can be adopted. So uh, we have legislative or regulatory instrument, there are economic instruments, financial instruments. There are strategic uh, instruments or planning instruments. Um, uh, IEC, information and communication instruments, technological instruments, and organizational instruments. So a lot of these, um, you know, some might say that oh, these are actually under the national government, but what are the opportunities from the local government? So let's look at first the strat strategic or planning instrument. So these are the measures that focus on better planning of infrastructure. So uh, planning that helps optimize its tra transport. Um, this covers both the public transport, um, the, the non-motorized transport, and like walking and cycling. So at the national level, there are a lot of strategic directions that can be provided. Um, let's say the industry development that we talked about earlier, the R&D, and that's of course linked to the funding, uh, public transport planning, uh, if, let's say for the buses and the railways uh, and power generation. So uh, the power generation and the direction on um, energy efficiency of transport sector. So DOE is providing oversight uh, on, on that area. Um, at the city level, now on the strategic or planning, no? so there are a lot more uh, uh, opportunities 
for the smaller modes of EVs like three wheelers or e trike So you've you've a lot of you have experience or are part of the DOE e trike project before. A lot of LGUs um, have had the chance to pilot uh, EVs no, or e trikes um, some example also include um, infrastructure for light electric uh, vehicles, uh, personal mobility devices, um, electric kick scooters. So a lot of discussions are surrounding that. Um, and of course, walking and cycling. Land use uh, planning and city roadmaps are also led at the national, at the local level. Now, going to the econ economic instruments, um, this can help generate revenue for infrastructure funding, no? but these can also be used to influence behavior. So at the national level, um, commonly this could be in the form, these are in the form of the vehicle and, and fuel tax. So of course, that's for the country's fiscal management. So MVUC, the motor vehicle users charge are also determined by uh, land transportation office on national level. Then uh, at the uh, city level, some examples um, include the parking pricing, parking uh, management. So you've heard some examples in the last few days uh, of, um, you know, there could be local parking uh, restrictions or parking benefits for EVs like electric two and three wheelers could be prioritized, especially um, if yun yung kumbaga marami ngayon. Then we also have regulatory instruments. So these are implemented to discourage travel or if you want to deny access to certain vehicles. No? So very polluting subpar quality vehicles that are entering the Philippine market. So those are under then the regulatory instrument. Uh, at the national level, so ito nasa of our national level. So at the national level, um, this could be in the form of uh, standards as you heard on day two uh, or charging protocols. No? So, um, uh, we talked a bit about standards to ensure product safety. Uh, we're also looking at emission standards um, and how does it connect. Um, later at the local level, you would see um, here, uh, this could be measures to, there could be measures to restrict the use of polluting vehicles. Um, priority of registration, uh, vehicle registration and renewal, issuance of private, uh, of plate license, uh, yeah. Uh, license plate, um, that's uh, at, usually at the national level. No? So, so Philippines, uh, LTO din yan. Um, at the city level, uh, authorities can implement measure to restrict certain types of vehicles in certain areas. So um, this is also where the baseline information or EI can direct us uh, which barangay or corridors are suffering or in, in kanina yung barangay ugang, di ba? which corridors are suffering from poor air quality um, but it's important to note here that uh, authorities must increase the alternatives in parallel. So like increasing the ease of use of public transport or see how traffic is better reduced or managed for those who are you know, in private modes of transport. Another example, the low emission zones. Now you also heard uh, about low emission zones uh, the other day. So these are areas where access is permitted only vehicles or classes of vehicles that are meeting a prescribed uh, emission standard. And uh, one thing to, to note here then is that there should be enough supply already of uh, vehicles with clean tailpipe emissions and EVs. No? So otherwise, um, resistance may be felt um, if commuters are not able to use certain roads for utility purposes. No? So if there are, if there are, are if mara, mas naging um, leisure yung purpose no and so there could be resistance from the ground then so another uh, example would be on the speed restrictions on let's say barangay roads up to i believe local roads uh, could be explored in general by cities you know? so especially uh, in cases when there are very narrow roads so i believe a lot of lgus uh, even within an lgu you know, there are a lot of roads na uh, minsan one day nang talaga um, and that's already shared by different transport transport modes, including walking. So speed re restrictions could be explored uh, along those to, um, uh, to also welcome the light EVs. Uh, next, we go to the information and communication instruments. Right. So um, at the national level, um, 
vehicle labeling in some countries are set up to ensure that at the point of sale, like the showroom or malls, um, the buyer is able to see the efficiency of vehicles. So, nakasulat doon yung kilometers per liter. So, in a in lot of countries, that is often linked to a subsidy program or let's say a higher tax uh, in cases uh, of... Uh, for the more fuel inefficient vehicles. No? So, uh, but that is often done at the national level. Now, at the local level, le local level naman, um, uh, other, other parts siguro muna sa national level and, uh, and the uh, information and communication also is, uh, are the awareness campaigns. So these are targeted in terms of communicating the, the national direction, which gives more confidence to the industry, the importers and the manufacturers. And these are often linked to the social, economic, and environmental objectives of the government, like uh, sustainable development goals, uh, NDCs, um, fuel use reduction um, to ensure better uh, energy security. So at the city level, uh, what are these opportunities? Um, these are also important, um, especially no, the in information and communication. So this is a new technology. And thus, we need to engage the stakeholders at the local level. So in e trike users, uh, those even with repair shops, how do we better take care of EVs, e trikes How do we get them on board to multiply the dissemination efforts of uh, the LGU or the authorities? No? So um, what could be explored as uh, information and, and communication side? So, um, and, and again, we go back to the... Um, kumbaga yung capacity ng LGU dito to see what the needs are from the ground up. No? So they can support the demand generation as we mentioned earlier, like of the industries, the LGU offices that are operating vehicle fleets. So yun. Um, so the, all of these no, um, can be used to achieve behavioral change and technological change. So now we go to the technology instruments. So this can be supported by... Um, uh, at the national level, um, let's say clean production and technology. So often the technology is under the national government, um, but these can be supported at the local level uh, or regional level no? uh, with more pilot projects and demonstrations. So underground proof of concepts. No? So we put here the pilot projects at the local level. It's the same as what we're doing with Pasig City uh, among other cities. Okay, so organizational level. Um, so at both the national and the local level, procurement can be an area to support the transition. So in addition to electrifying their own fleets, government agencies, uh, including the local authorities, can push their general suppliers or contractors, uh, for example, who are active in the city, to use EVs. Okay. So other uh, organizational tools include leveraging city-owned properties like the parking uh, spots uh, and street sites that are or the roads that are um, under the purview of the government uh, city government so public garage on street space can be used for charging infrastructure then so yeah all right um let's see all right so um a few i think two more slides um so one area to note is that the planning aspect. So we're grateful to be working with BASIC on enhancing the uh, plans to integrate e-mobility through a roadmap, as Sarah has mentioned. So basically an SUMP, Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning, uh, is an integrated strategic long-term transport planning with clear goals and monitoring um, that aims at better accessibility and quality of life for the functional urban area. Um, so this is, uh, I think, I believe my last slide. So e-mobility e should not be a standalone measure. So it has to be integrated into the, uh, the whole local level or urban mobility planning process. So this is an image of the SUMP process, and it provides a basic set of questions to guide the planning process. So uh, here you have like, what are our resources? So let's set up our uh, working structure. Like if, if PASIC already has its uh, steering committee to plan and implement e-mobility solutions uh, on the ground. Um, you know, you see, so the city is able to reflect on um, what is our planning context, what is our baseline, um, which is what we, which is the state where we're in now, 
uh, what are our options, and we'll hear shortly from the different sectors later um, uh, what kind of city do we want. So this is more on the visioning and the planning now. So uh, we will share the slides uh, at least for uh, participants though, uh, who have registered, so you can access this. But um, this is a key takeaway. Um, these are the important matters to be uh, reminded of, especially at the local level. Vision and planning, it's always important to go back to the question of how do you see your economy moving in 10, 20 years? How are they powered? So if something is moving um, and it's not human powered, you have to think about the energy source. So with this, you have to revisit and coordinate with uh, uh, those who are planning uh, or developing the long-term energy goals. Uh, second, the costs. Again, we will hear, uh, we have been hearing about the, the challenges in purchase costs. So challenges remain with regard to financing programs. A lot of sectors uh, need support. So we often hear about high upfront costs, uh, unknown costs for the maintenance, um, because even if we talked about, oh, this is uh, uh, operational wise, this is actually uh, more, less expensive, but it's an, an unknown um, area. Pa. So capacity, lack of trained maintenance personnel, also even from the regulator or policymakers side, a lot of solutions are available. Um, there are uh, there could be uncertain uncertainties pa rin as to what capacity should be built, whose expertise to enhance, sino ba ang dapat i-capacitate. Um, so that goes uh, back again to the multi-stakeholder planning and engagement and identifying the actors and their roles. So, so again, with the immobility, you're looking at import, importation, manufacturing, technologies, financial programs, regulations, and the different policy instruments. No? So um, if it's a, really, if it's a, a new concept, uh, support is greatly needed uh, to ensure that the right actors are involved. So um, that's all. And I believe uh, throughout this session, we'll hear from perspectives of, of um, shared mobility. I see from the agenda, the enterprises or SMEs uh, and, and e-trikes or e-three wheelers, which are all within the, the purview of LGU. So thank you so much.